It was that damn sonata. The Kreutzer. One evening, my husband and I were relaxing with a rented video on Beethoven called Immortal Beloved. It's a biopic about Beethoven. When there came a moment in the movie, just a few seconds. He and George Bridgetower, the famous virtuoso from Africa, were about to premiere this new Beethoven sonata at Count Razumovsky's that evening. And I turned to my husband and I said, what was that? This is a story about music and what it does to those who make it, whom it enslaves. Yes, slavery of all kinds enters into the mix. Although the skin of our protagonist does not play so great a role in his advancement and subsequent fade from grace as might be imagined. say that the racial divide has not yet been invented. His life is an improbable story, where the great composer Franz Haydn actually discovered the child genius in the servants' quarters. He played across Europe, all the way to Paris, to London's royal court, but his greatest triumph came in his early 20s when he traveled to Vienna and inspired Ludwig van Beethoven, arguably the greatest composer of all times, to write his most stunning violin sonata for his new lunatic mulatto, as he called him. But there, George Bridge Tower's extraordinary success story ends. All because of a falling out over a girl, nobody remembers, nobody knows. Beethoven rededicated the sonata to another violinist, Rudolf Kreutzer, who not only never played the Kreutzer sonata, but declared it unplayable. his violin. That's it. He was born to a drug-addicted woman. Both small, unremarkable. Until one of them moves, the boy lifts his arm, or the violin floats up to kiss his chin. And then he was placed in foster care. A man can vanish between the downstroke and the first note sigh. From one word to the next, a wink and a nod. This woman, she hit him with baseball bats. His legs were broken in 18 places. They said he might not walk. He'll evaporate under a lady's glance as her smile slides across the room. And the doctor said that if there was anything that kid needed at the time, it was a mother. But a boy looks out from the backs of his eyes. A boy stays where you put him, invisible until you hiccup, and suddenly, he's there. I'm off then to anywhere, Viotti's perhaps, or closer, the royal boudoir, the arabesques and flickering silks of music, always music. Only music now can save me. Ready? Um, you either have da 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 dum da 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 dum 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 dum, or you have dum 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 dum. 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 I go in to play a competition or an audition. Uh, oftentimes, they'll tell me that the jazz auditions are on the other side of the building, or like that kind of thing. And you know, you it, you, you get over it. All my life, I've been confronted with variations of that old line, what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? And early on it was, what are you doing in the orchestra playing cello? 
uh, what are you doing studying German? Apparently these were not black approved activities. The implication being that an African American poet had no business dabbling in European culture. Somewhere in America, the next great artist is doodling on their homework. They're out there right now, dwelling in possibility. Oh, look at that. Unbelievable piece. We need them to succeed. <laughs> to disrupt our views. Yeah. And to challenge our presumptions. So it's not only just looking back at history and being able to neatly put it in a box, even if we say, oh, there were so many that were constrained back then. Now, let's roll it forward then, because this is still happening now. Where instead of a Regina Carter or Aaron Dworkin or Boyd Tinsley sprinkled here and there, we would find rafts of black kids scratching out scales on their matchbox violins so that someday they might play the impossible. Beethoven's Sonata No. 9 in A major, Opus 47, also known as the Bridge Tower. What you will hear at the beginning of that sonata is something that everyone thought was insane at that time. You will hear a solo violin. Then you'll hear a solo piano. And it's a call and response. They talk to one another. It is the power of music to carry one directly into the mental state of the composer. The listener has no choice. It is like hypnotism. So the poet as witness. Where is the poet in the poem? In order to even begin to approach Bridge Tower's story, poetically, that I had to figure out how to bear witness. But when you're writing music, you're, you sort of choose what you do want to put in your music. You don't write music for an exercise to show all of the different things that you know how to do as a composer, or you're not really being authentic to your own music. Because I was historian, poet, I mean, I created it. If you're able to do it in the late 17, early 1800s, then you're able to do it now. Yes, and that was one of the things that drove me to write the book. I was curious to find out exactly how people regarded a mixed race uh, person, and it was radically different from uh, what happens in this country. It's also really incredible that this mixed race child could grow up and become a prodigy 200 years before, uh, you know, Obama becomes president. There are so many parallels and echoes here.